What's good? What's good? What's good, boys and girls? It is your boy BQ, and this is the Negative BQ YouTube channel. This is your Impact Lounge, Impact Wrestling review, Bound for Glory Go Home Show for October twenty four, two thousand twenty four. We're gonna jump into this review here, real, real quick. No bullshitting. We got Bound for Glory tonight. I'm gonna try to do a Bound for Glory uh, prediction show after this. So we're going to jump right into this thing. Um, I don't usually do go home shows, but uh, it's appropriate. It's Bound for Glory. They we, they tell us it's the biggest show of the year. It's like the second or third biggest. <laughs> we we talk about that every year. All right. Um, I'm not going to talk about Tom Hannafin this uh, this episode. Anyway, six way tag team match. Not a six way tag team match. Like a six way match. Six pack challenge. I'm not really sure what they call it. They've been doing it for this. The they've been doing this for the last couple years, where it'll be a six way match. The person who gets pinned gets the coveted, and I put that in quotation marks. Trust me, number twenty spot for the call your shot gauntlet. I say that in quotations because I don't know that anyone's ever won it from that spot. It, it is possible. Um, the majority of the winners have come from number one. And it's probably going to happen this year, too. Uh, we'll get into that here in a sec. But the person who wins comes in at number 20. The person who gets pinned comes in at number one. So the participants in this match, we had the number one contender for the Digital Media Championship, Laredo Kid. Naked Jake. Jake something. Do you mind if I slip into something more comfortable? Representing the good hand jobs, Jason Hotch. Hey, for another 60, I'll jerk you off in the parking garage. AJ Francis from Economy Class. But I am telling you right now, that motherfucker, that motherfucker back there is not real. King of the block party, Frankie Gazarian. It's a block party. I'm not playing with y'all, bro. And the returning salami calorie ham, the bread machine. Oh, you, you gotta give him that hook. Ooh, and spit on that thing. <laughs> um, so this match was fine. I was I was pretty certain one way or another Frankie Kazarian was gonna be number one or twenty. I could have bet my fucking testicles that the finish of the match was gonna be someone going for a pin and get, getting screwed by someone else. And that's um that's pretty much what happened here. So the match is what it was. I knew Laredo Kid wasn't gonna win. You know, he's destined to rematch for the digital media championship. Jake something I knew wasn't going to win. I think he won. I think he I think he was 20 last year, right? I think he won that this match. Uh they always give us fake pushes when it comes to Jake something and they did the same thing or they've done the same thing this year. They they spent all this time putting together this uh tag team with Hammerstone. <laughs> it's uh we we've seen nothing of it. Uh, they put us through this long storyline with Cody Diener. They they blew it off on explosion, I think. So um, this poor guy, man. Um, you know, Jason Hacho is. I know they're showcasing him. They're highlighting him. They've been doing that the last couple of months. I knew he wasn't going to win. Uh, AJ Francis, I knew that was very much a possibility that he would win. Sammy Callahan, if I had to put money on it, he would have got pinned at the end and ended up being number one. That's kind of where I thought they were going with that one. I actually thought. Frankie was going to screw like AJ Francis over or something. And then um, obviously Frankie Kazarian. I've um, I pointed this out last week. There's only ever one storyline going into the call your shot gauntlet. This could be their money in their bank, money in the bank, their Royal rumble. This could be something that really sells bound for glory every year. And every year it means less and less and less and less. Maybe I don't say it means less because obviously Jordan won it last year. And then, you know, uh, won the title for, you could say, is a pretty historic run. But as far as the importance they give it on the show, you know what I mean? And it, like now it's on the pre-show. And there's always the argument with the pre-show. Is the pre-show important? Well, yeah, it's usually the free thing that you try to get people, you know, get people hooked on for the show. But then also it feels like it lacks importance because it's not good enough for the main show. So it's really weird. You got to ha have a good balance. So. It's not that I have a problem with this being on the pre-show. It's just that they didn't even talk about this match until a week or week or so ago. 
and we know I'll say we know two participants. All six of these people are going to be in the match, though. Um, and I think based on the system's promo later, I, I would say Dango's going to be in it. And there's always one comedy character. You know, we've had the demon. We've had Swoggle. Um, I, my assumption is it's going to be Ace Steel this year. So not really a comedy character, but someone we, we're not taking serious to win the match. Um, also being in Detroit... Uh, nah, we're, we're, I'm, I'm not, I, I'm not, I don't think any of the surprises for this are going to be anything worth a damn, but typically there's one who is going to be a part of the show going forward. And then there's one who's just kind of making an appearance. Like I think that Juventus Guerrero or Guerrero last year or something like that. Um, always about three surprises, but there is one storyline, one so Frankie Kazarian is going to win this freaking match, or, or I'm pretty sure he's going to win. I I just don't see what other direction they could possibly go for this. I'm not going to okay. Tom Hannafin, um, at the very beginning of the match, Frankie Kazarian wants um, Jay Chung to say he's the king of TNA and all that. Laredo Kid drop kicks him out of the ring, and and. Tom Hannafin, this is the last time I'm going to bring him up, says, I believe Laredo Kid took out Frankie Kazarian. No shit. We just saw it right in front of our faces. We saw him drop kick him out of the ring, but this motherfucker is com- completely baffled on, befumbled on who could have possibly, he thinks, he thinks it was the guy in the mask. It's hard because everyone in this match looks the same. So AJ Francis ultimately wins this thing. He's going to come at 20. He's he's the biggest guy in the match, probably, so they're going to say he's hard to eliminate. He'll probably be eliminated immediately. Um, but the way that they finish this, uh, Sammy Callahan hits the pile driver on Frankie Gazarian. AJ Francis gives him a running boot, kicks him off, gets the win. So AJ Francis versus Sammy Callahan feud incoming, guys. Just that that's That's incoming. All right, so after that, we had uh, Gia Miller backstage. Jesus Christ, that's perfect. Of course you're here right now. And she's with Jonathan Gresham, and this is becoming a weekly thing. You have the opening match. You have the Gia Miller interview. She's interviewing someone who's telling you they're one of the best professional wrestlers in the world. This is uh, like several weeks in a row of this shit now. Jonathan Gresham, uh, uh, Nick Nemeth. Uh, Josh Alexander like it's just it's the same promo every single week and it just you know when I used to always say the format of the show was just like real cookie cutter it's always the opening match interview someone who says they're best wrestler in the world and then move on to the next segment it's it's, it's so like getting kind of predictable at this point um, but we're pretending Jonathan Gresham wasn't a heel four weeks ago then we got um some Mike Santana video, the first of several Mike Fa- Mike Santana video packages. That's nasty. I would like to see more of these, and I don't mean from him because they're clearly doing it for him. I like to see it from more of the wrestlers. You know, like take take um, an opportunity every episode to just kind of highlight someone, someone in a feud. Of course, we don't want to be like, oh, here's the right old kid. Someone, someone in a feud, someone involved in something that we're, we're invested in. But I, I would like to see more of these because I, I think they're very, very good. After that, we got the launch party by Elegance, including Ash by Elegance and the personal concierge. That's my dad. But don't worry. He's cool. Really? <laughs> he doesn't look cool. And they have this whole setup here with the champagne. And for whatever reason, they have two bowls of champagne. I don't know who they're expecting to come to this launch party because they only have three glasses and they were open the bottles. So it wasn't like they were scooping out of the bowl. So right right away, I see these bowls. I'm like, whose faces are going? Well, obviously, their faces are going into this. Very, very predictable um, 1997 WWE shit. With that being said, though, um, I, this was something I've been invested in the last couple of weeks because I wanted to see... You know, I mean, as a matter of fact, when Heather Reckless signed with the company, I, I said that episode she would make a great lackey for Ash by Elegance, and that is exactly where they're going with it. So 
I'm happy with that. And um, they call her out and they have, she is now, which this is another thing I was saying. I hope they called her. Uh, she is Heather by elegance. He has an erection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's all her fault. And um, she comes down. She looks, she looks very nice. She hasn't seen herself. So they show her a mirror and she's, she's beside herself. There's a lot of very fake acting going on by Ash. I actually thought Heather was very good in this segment who, who I've criticized her acting in a little short time she's been with the company. But I thought she played into the gimmick well to where Ash is, was very, very over the top. At one point, the fans booed her and she looked really shocked like she hasn't, she's not a lifetime heel. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, but this whole segment was fine. I was, I was entertained by it because I was looking forward to it, frankly. And um, right, right at the time that they're wrapping this thing up, we get the music of the undisputed queen of the rubber match. <laughs> Zaya Brookside. And, and, you know, I think Zaya Brookside is a really underrated promo. Um, and I mentioned last week, there's there's some wrestlers who are a lot prettier in person than in TV. She's, she's one of them, as a matter of fact. But uh, I think she's a very underrated promo. I've been saying all year that I think she can be a real massive baby face for this company. If, if you know, if the stars align, if the opportunity is there for her, I think she's um, very, very good. I think I, I've I watched her once um, before signing with NXT or NXT UK or whatever the hell she did. I, I saw a couple indie matches of her a long time ago, and I was like, I, I kind of like this girl. Um, so I'm really happy that she's part of the company. But I think she she cuts a very good promo. It's not, you know, she's been a little cheesy here, but it's it's also, you know, coming up coming off fairly natural as well. And she brings up, of all people, Brindley Reese. I'm here to tell you right now, we don't care. Let me tell, right, let me tell you, <laughs> we don't care. And that they embarrassed her or whatever she said about it. Now, NXT bringing in these women, they've brought in some talented girls. They brought in some jobbers. Like this was the, the probably, if, if we're just ranking like best to worst. Like she was probably the worst one they brought over. Um, but she has landed a spot on the bound for glory card. So I believe it's going to be on the pre-show. We're going to get a uh, Ash by El Ash and Heather by elegance and a future knockouts tag team champions. I, I, sh I, sh I should preface preface uh, prefix. Oh my God. Just let's, let's take a breath for a second. Future knockouts tag team champions. Ash and Heather by elegance. The reason I say that is because all you have to do is put together a team and you win the titles in this company. Like it is a 100% guarantee. So I think um, I'm pretty sure Wendy and Chu, Wendy Chu and Rosemary will win the titles. I don't know how long they'll have them, but you know, they're these one, these two girls are winning the titles shortly after, and they're going to hold them for a long time as well. I actually wouldn't be so surprised if Spitfire wins, to be honest. It just depends on where the relationship with NXT is going, how much Rosemary is going to continue to be on the show, how much Wendy Chu can be available for TNA. You know what I mean? Th those are the factors that are going to come into it to say if they're going to win the titles or not. It makes more sense for these two to take the titles off Spitfire, though. So, yeah, that's what we're getting that at um, Bound for Glory. And then after that, we got Josh Alexander. I don't want to play with you anymore. And they will be taken on. Oh, no, he, he's not. No, the, I'm sorry. Josh Alexander came out with uh, members of the Northern Armory. I was thinking this was a tag team match for a second, but no, 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 no. Kid Icarus and the wizard Walt Williams. I'm just a job? Oh! I should have played the O when they uh, got face planted into the, the bowls of champagne, huh? Oh! Anyway, they take on, not they, I swear to God, I am like so convinced this is a tag team match for whatever reason. He, Josh Alexander, takes on Jonathan Gresham. Iggy, the octopus. And I, I know a lot of you guys probably like this match. There was a lot of grab ass and tickle dick going on. I'm not saying I didn't, I didn't like it. I knew that it was going to start off slow. I could have 
bet any amount of money that it was going to. But they got a little bit of time and a very good match. I mean, obviously, as they point out 50 times a show, these are two of the best professional wrestlers in the world. And um, they put on a good match. They, they really, truly did. Josh Alexander obviously gets the win here. Jonathan Gresham, we're assuming, is kind of on his way out. They never really found out what to do with him. Uh, they obviously went with Inky the Octopus for a little bit. It just didn't quite, just didn't quite click. After the match, they're doing a post. Uh, excuse me, they're doing a post match. I can't speak this morning. I'm sorry. A post match beat down of Jonathan Gresham, Steve Macklin. I'm not going to play the music. Steve Macklin comes running out, and they continue to beat, or they ultimately end up beating his ass. They keep zip tying him which I think the zip ties are going to come into play in this match at Bound for Glory, or there's going to be a rematch after Bound for Glory. And they, they could involve zip ties, even if it's like no disqualification. I wouldn't mind watching these two guys wrestle with their both of their hands zip tied behind their back and wrestle with their feet or something. Anyway, they're doing a, a beatdown, and this is the only feud a bound for glory that has legitimate heat going into it. This is the only one. Like I keep talking about Matt Cardona and PCO and every, and, and it, they're acting like, Oh, PCO is finally going to get his hands on Matt Cardona. He's got his hands on him like three times. He's always on his ass. His ass was up in the air last episode. Cause he carried him off. Like he's getting his hands on, on Matt Cardona. You know what I'm saying? There's zero heat in that match. This has some heat because it keeps ending with with Steve Macklin in zip ties on his ass. You know, so that's how you freaking do this. I'm very much looking forward to the match at Bound for Glory. But um yeah, they're they're just they're beating him down after the match. And then the TNA jobbers run down to save him. So um again we've got Sammy Callahan. Oh, you gotta give him that hook. We had Ace Steel. That my security, my safety, my life was in danger. And TNA's version of the fart in church, Cody Diener. I pray that the blessing of Almighty God may rest upon your counsels. So they came down to save him. Um, I'm, I'm sure... I think Cody Diener is going to be in the gauntlet. That's why he was on screen. Um, I think Ace Steel is going to be. I, I, I'm just predicting he's going to be in it. He's going to be one of the, the three surprises. Because um, it's just otherwise, why is he on screen right now? And um, yeah, so as I said, this is the one few that has some heat behind it. I don't think it's going to be a one-off match. I don't think, I think Josh is going to win a Bound for Glory. But I think it's going to continue. Hopefully Josh does not leave. But if if he does, um, putting over Macklin on the way out would be the right move. But I'm liking this Northern Armory. It has some, some legs to it. So I really don't want Josh to go because then you're leaving a good gimmick behind. And this has happened a couple times in the last couple of years. You seem like you there seems like this this good gimmick is forming and then someone leaves, you know. So hopefully that's not what happens. After this, we got um Wendy Chu versus Jobby threat. Tell me right now that I'm just a job. Tell me to my face. You're just a job. I thought Jody looked good here. Um, I thought her ring gear looked good. I thought she looked a little more professional, you know, a little more like a knockout. And I thought this was one of her better matches as well. Usually she gets on a screen, her and Danny Luza and I like have such little interest. It's crazy. Um, she was away for personal reasons. I'm talking about Danny and Rosemary was there in her corner. The only issue I really had with this match again, I thought the match was fine. I thought it was Jody's best match in the company that she's had one on one, but the finish was horrible. I mean, he threw the pillow in the ring. The referees distracted. Rosemary hits. 
I don't know if she was supposed to hit a headbutt or a forearm, but it seemed like it was a combination of the two. And then Jody didn't really know what she was going to get hit with. And then I don't know if this was Wendy Chu's finisher and it just came off wrong, but it looked, it looked like a full Nelson and then flip out into a face buster type of thing, or at least that's how Jody took it. (laughs) So I don't know. The, um, the whole ending was awful to that, but we knew that, Wendy Chu is going to win because they got to get a little bit of momentum for Bound for Glory. And really, come to think of it now, I don't think they're going to win. I think when I get to my predictions here, I think I'm changing my prediction. I think um, Spitfire is going to win this thing. And then we got a system promo. We can see up Eddie Edwards' nose. You know, clearly this is... I'm glad they don't do this for every backstage promo, but it's something they're trying to do with the camera angles to make the system one look different. I think that's fine. I think the cameras are a little too close. Um, I was really only paying attention to Alicia Edwards because she looked incredible. Uh, hey, baby. Um, but this was probably one of the better system promos. They have had they had a couple very good ones to start the year, and then I really have not enjoyed their promos since. So I thought this one was actually pretty good. Then uh, Tom Hannafin runs down the. Bound for Glory card, and then says we're having a triple main event. I understand the concept. How can you have three main events? You can only have one. There's only one match that ends a show. You can get away with saying you have a double main event because they they treat the semi-main as as one of the main events as well. Oftentimes, it's the knockouts, which it is going to be in this case as well. I get it, but I mean, triple main event. They're they're doing that because the Hardys are involved, not because the system or the champions, not because ABC, the former champions, are. It's strictly because of the Hardys. So I get it. It's it's marketing. You know what I mean? But a little little silly for me. Oh, and, and this didn't. This the, the match was good. Um, it was obviously the Hardys. Um, Teaming up with ABC, Chris Bay. I'm terribly sorry. I don't know why I can't stop saying black. The word black. And Ace Austin. Is this your card? Yes. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it's it's not, is it? <clears throat> no. Uh... Oh, I can't count. And the match was fine for what it was. They're taking on all four members of the system. Um. I had thought that they were going to build some heat here where just because they've been doing predictable things and this is like a predictable thing they do in wrestling, I thought they were going to build a little bit of heat between ABC and the Hardys here. That is clearly not what they did. Um, The system has taken so many losses in the last couple months. My God. My freaking God. Anyway, I'm going to tell you exactly what this was. This was, Hey, ABC, you're not getting a one-on-one or two-on-two, I should say, contractually obligated rematch, Tom. You're not getting that. So what we are going to give you is you're going to have this eight-man tag. The Hardys are your partners. You're going to win. This is your your win. This is your moment. This is We're giving this to you so that when the Hardys win the tag team title is bound for glory, you don't look weak. This is TNA, okay? The Hardys are going to win the tag team championships. I think just, I think those titles, no, we'll get into the Bound for Glory preview in a little bit. So um, that was that. And then there's a post match beat down with the system. He fucking shocker. Every single time these guys wrestle. And then we've got a double contract signing. I, I never have interest in these. I never have in the history of professional wrestling. We get Santino Morella. Sometimes it may be good. Sometimes it may be shit. And then he announces them one by one. First, Masha Slamovich. Meet Fran Stalinaskovich. And then Jordan Grace. He called her Jordan Gracci or something like that. Um, no, he actually, you know what? He, he didn't say Jordan Grace because he did the... Uh, Challengers first. So he did Masha. Then he did uh, Joe Hendry. Believe that. And he, he called him Joseph something. I don't even think he said Hendry. And then um, Jordan Gracchi. If you're going to, like, 
if we're going to take this serious, this is your biggest show of the year. What you, you, this comedy character coming out and doing comedy, which is not not funny. And I've said before, I liked Santino a lot in WWE, but it's very very different when you're dealing with mega superstars. I think I might have just had some Wi-Fi issues there a second ago, but um, just in case, I'm going to repeat myself just in case. If this is your Bound for Glory double, that's well, the triple main event, but two of your main events, and this is serious, and you're trying to sell the show, and it's your biggest show of the year, or at least you're claiming that it is, you have him coming out doing bad comedy, and the Santino character is not, for the most part, bad comedy. Like He's clearly a funny guy. I think his best days are behind him. But it works when you're dealing with big-time superstars, the John Cena's of the world. Triple H's that stuff gets over in a smaller company. I I just don't think it is. He's mispronouncing names just to do it. You know, there's no real rhyme or reason behind it where with WWE and he was mispronouncing names. It made sense. Like here, he's just, he's just doing it to rehash an old gimmick. And it just doesn't, it just doesn't hit for me. But anyway, after that, he announces Nick Nemeth. I've been talking to people walking here. We've been talking about next year, and I'm sitting there saying, I'm not going to be here. <laughs> and he did the same thing that we hear every episode. He's like, these are four of the best professional wrestlers in the world. Man, if I had a dime for every time that they say it on that show, like, every, everybody can't be the best. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like, it can't be... It can't be everyone's gimmick to be the best wrestler in the world. That's where, like, we're just, I don't want to say, it's not, like, lazy, but it's just, like, that. that's just the difference between now and 10 years ago, 20 years ago, and where people are trying to get characters over and, 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 and trying to get personalities over, and now it's everyone's just trying to wrestle and, and be good at it. You know, I, I've used the example before of Rock and Stone Cold. Can you imagine if they're, their feuds or classic feuds were over who, who's the best wrestler. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Imagine Stone Cold coming out there, coming, I'm the best professional wrestler in the world. The Rock saying that shit. Like, anyway, uh, we knew where this was going. We knew someone was going through the table. As soon as Santino started signing off and wishing the crowd well, I knew something was going to happen. Uh, King of the Block Party, Frankie Gazarian came out. Cut a pretty good promo. I popped at Nikolai, calling uh, Masha Slamovich Nikolai. I thought he did a good job here. I was like, he's going through the table, and he did. And they're they're making him look like a real goof. There, he he's been losing. He's gonna be number one at the gauntlet. I just feel like they're trying to throw us off that he's gonna somehow walk out of Bound for Glory with the title. I'm I'm actually real excited to see how they go off the show. I mean, go off the air at Bound for Glory. It could be predictable. It could not be, but I'm I'm curious to see. All right, so that was about 17 minutes, 16 minutes less or uh, quicker than I normally do a review. I'm going to try to get into the Bound for Glory preview here shortly, and that'll do it for me. I'm your boy, BQ. Peace. <laughs>